Almost like the flashpoint, where it starts, one of the key matrix lines that will help shatter this status centralized system. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Flashpoint Radio. I am your host, Jay-Z, all dressed up nice and spiffy for my trial date tonight. Wish me luck. Um, it is Monday, March 19th, 2012. Uh, the news of the day was still caucus craziness in St. Charles and uh, various other places around the St. Louis area. Um, many radio stations talked about it. We will listen to a few clips from the Jamie Allman show in a minute. And we've got a couple other clips we're going to show um, dealing with a few other issues. First off, I'd like to thank you all for joining me. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for the support and the feedback. I appreciate it greatly. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Flashpoint Radio and Facebook.com slash Flashpoint Radio. Click subscribe above and click like below and reshare this with your friends. Let's get the word out, people. Um, we need to be getting this to people that are not awake. This is not an offense. This is not offensive information, so you should not be afraid to share it with those you love. Um, first order of business, my court date. Uh, I just wanted to inform you, if, if you hadn't watched the earlier episode from earlier this month, uh, I'm going to trial for a $10 parking ticket. I figured I cannot complain about the goofy tyranny we're living under and the, the, the bureaucratic rules we have to follow in this country. I can't complain about it if I'm not going to stand up um, and fight it myself. So. I fought a $10 parking ticket and my trial date is tonight. I believe I have a good case, but I've never been to an actual trial where I was the defendant. So we will see what will happen. I will give you a report either this evening, probably tomorrow, because I think my wife might want some time with me later tonight for dinner. And as you can see, we are packing boxes, so we will be moving. Um, but anyways, we're going to get right into some of the news, some of the headlines, and some media for your eyes to and ears to take in. First, we are going to uh, go to some clips from the Jamie Allman Show on 97.1 this morning. He interviewed Brent Stafford, uh, the Geo, uh, St. Charles Republican Central Committee member who was arrested on Saturday. Uh, only two people were arrested, but as you saw in the video I posted yesterday, they needed 60 or so cop cars, four plus different departments, um, and a police helicopter to arrest two people on trespassing charges, which will probably be dropped. Uh, I, I, it was a great interview. Jamie Allman was very fair, I believe. He, he did a great job. He, he let Brent talk whenever he wanted. He didn't cut him off. He didn't try to minimize, minimize what he was saying. I think this is the number one highlight from the interview. Listen to this. There's there's this uh, narrative that the Ron Paul supporters were all a bunch of rabble rousing uh, people, and I'm I try I'm trying to tell people that you know that narrative is um, is false, and it, clearly there were people who were energetic, but the fact of the matter is a lot of Ron Paul people know this caucus system backwards and forwards. That's how Ron Paul has amassed uh, the delicates he has, at least, and so uh, well, you guys know the <laughs> rules. If you want to, if you want us a, a, a crowd of rowdy Ron Paul people, try to violate their rights and try to not follow the rules. That's you'll get that real quick. That is Brent on Jamie Allman's show saying, "If you want a rowdy Ron, a, a rowdy crowd of Ron Paul supporters, try to violate their rights." That is right. We know our rights, and we are going to defend them. Uh, we will not choose violence first. We will choose. Uh, nonviolence and speaking out and speaking out sometimes gets loud and we sometimes yell I'm sorry if we hurt people's feelings while I think the interview was good I think as always the trickle-down media who gets their pointers from the top and it trickles down to your local bloggers and talk show they always have to put that kernel of propaganda in and here is the kernel from the Jamie Allman show today if you're Barack Obama, you're looking at that and you're thinking, you've got to be thinking, you're a Democrat. You've got to be thinking, wow, there are a lot of people out there who will get arrested and who will fight and who will yell and scream just for the, the joy of removing you from the White House. 
That's the upside for me, at least. Yes, as you can see, he believes that uh, Barack Obama should be frightened because there are people that are willing to get in arguments and be arrested in order to get him removed from office in November. Well, Jamie, that may be true that Ron Paul supporters do not want Barack Obama reelected in November, but we are the people who are yelling. We are the supporters that are being arrested, and we're not being arrested for Ron Paul. We're not being arrested to get Obama out of office. We're being arrested in defense of liberty. Uh, I cannot speak for Brent or anyone else, but I believe they would say, yes, I was arrested in defense of liberty, not in defense of a political party. Uh, Jamie Allman and the rest of the Republican establishment is still trying to uh, give us a nice, cozy place to come, so come November, they think they'll get our votes. You won't. Uh, we are done with the lesser of two evils, and I suggest everyone tells everyone to be done with the lesser of two evils. It is not unpatriotic to not vote when all you have is liars to vote for. I believe it is wholly patriotic and a duty to abstain from voting when there are no good choices. We can always write in Ron Paul, but we will never, I state, myself personally, and I hope you will join me, never vote for the lesser of two evils again. Uh, the two-party dictatorship is over. It is over. It was over on Saturday. The Republican Party can no longer claim that the Democrats are corrupt because they just showed their hand. They are as bad, if not worse, than the Democratic uh, machine that we have to fight in Barack Obama. Moving right along, though, I suggest you check out the interview. Check out all the uh, interviews and the videos regarding the St. Charles and St. Louis caucuses. It was a interesting day in St. Louis. Uh, moving right along, though, this next clip comes to us from uh, a gentleman on YouTube, Matt on Air, who is a, a radio uh, personality in Chicago. And let's go to the clip right here. You may find this uh, appalling, hilarious, or just downright sad. Rocco, he's got to check you. He's just going to check you out, okay? Yeah. Can you sit up for me? Sit up. Real you're nice. Good, you're a good boy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take some swab with this cast also, okay? And another chair. A what? So, uh, I'm just going to swab uh, the okay. chairs and uh, this cast. Yeah, we're going to go there and then we're going to eat in a minute. I know. It's kind of weird, but it's no big deal. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you can, can you lift your shirt up? If you don't want to do it here, I can move it into a private screening area. The back side? Okay. It's okay. He's just checking you out. Checking out this chair. That was a toddler who had a broken leg and was in a wheelchair because he couldn't walk being patted down by TSA at Chicago O'Hare Airport. Uh, he was with his entire family on a trip to Disney and his entire family went through and he was, he was singled out um, to have an uh, uh, enhanced screening. I believe from what I read somewhere that this was actually an airport wheelchair that they were borrowing from the car to the gate. So if anyone wants to say, well, it was a wheelchair and they had to check the wheelchair, it's their wheelchair. If they can't protect their own wheelchairs, then what are they doing? Um, this is ridiculous. Just another example of the, some of the things that can unite us, uh, Democrats, Republicans, everyone has to see that this is wrong, that, that it doesn't matter who the terrorists are, if they, if they pulled off 9-11 or if it was an inside job, either way, the, they won. Our rights are gone. We've decided to forego our rights because of fear against Ben Franklin's wishes. This is ridiculous. Spread this around. If you haven't seen this video, video please spread this around. Um, you don't have to spread my version. Spread the gentleman who put it on there. It is his video. Um, but yeah. And I read some of these comments, and these morons who think the government is actually protecting them are absolutely out of their mind. Because if I'm on a plane with 75 other people and three guys with box cutters gets up, guess what? They're not taking the cockpit in 19 or in 2001, in 1991, or 1952 when they had curtains instead of doors. They're not taking the cockpit. So just think about that. Box cutters. Box cutters is what pulled off 9/11. Box cutters. 
Remember that and do your own research and think it through your head, people. It's called common sense. We have it for a reason. Use it. Um, finally, our last bit of uh, media nugget gold we're going to show you comes from our current uh, um, Department of Justice head, Eric Holder. Uh, let's, I, I'll let him speak for himself. We want to have, as part of the gun initiative, though, an informational campaign to really change the hearts and minds of people in Washington, D.C., and in particular, our young people, uh, to carry a gun anymore. Uh, in the way in which we've changed our attitudes about cigarettes, how are outside uh, of buildings and kind of smoke in private and don't want to admit it. Um, and that's what I think we need to do with guns. Uh, I've also asked the school board to make a part of every day some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. That comes to us from Breitbart.com. Please listen to the, the whole three or so minute video. Um, he said that he, in 1995 when he was assistant director, he said that he wanted to uh, brainwash the public using television shows and using announcements in schools to get the public against guns, um, to an anti-gun campaign. This was during the Clinton administration. You all know the assault weapons ban, uh, the extended clip ban, uh, the Brady Bill. Give me a break. This, this, this is their stated goal, which is to disarm us so they can take over. They can't take over as long as we are armed, so we pose the greatest threat to them. But in 1995, Eric Holder saying, we need to brainwash the public to believe us in our anti-gun campaigns. There you go, proof positive out of the mouth of the man. Uh, I don't know how you can deny it anymore. This, this, is, this is real, this is happening. That, they pulled that off of C-SPAN's new archives. They, they dumped their entire cult catalog of recordings they've done over the last 20 plus years. And it's searchable. If you think you have anything that you remember seeing on C-SPAN at some point in the last 30 years, go back there and check. Find some nuggets of gold to spread around the internet so we can expose these corrupt individuals that seem to think they can run our lives. Uh, and who are, they, who are they bowing to? Who are they kowtowing to? Well, this comes to us from the Chicago Tribune. Chicago officials deny permit for May 20th NATO protest march. Uh, if you didn't know, May 19th and 20th, they were going to hold the G8 summit, which is an economic summit between the eight largest economies in the, nation, or in the world, and on the 20th host a NATO summit uh, in Chicago, both at the same time. They decided to move the G8 summit, which was on the 19th, to Martha's Vineyard, be a fear of protests, and of course, the fact that you have the G8 and NATO in the same city seems a bit fishy. Uh, the, the, these protesters applied for a permit for a parade on the 19th. They were, they were allowed that permit, and they had planned to do it. When they moved the G8, the NATO meeting starts on the 20th, so they wanted to reapply for a permit to have their parade on the 20th. It was denied. Why was it denied? Well, it was denied because the NATO people can't have that many people, uh, can't have uh, any problems. The police have to protect the NATO summit and not... Um, not the citizens of Chicago. It says, quote, motorcades for the NATO attendees will create significant traffic impediments, which would be exacerbated by the 2.64 mile proposed parade route. Moreover, the proposed parade route winds through the city center on the first day of the national special security event and would create significant traffic concerns and a drain on existing police resources. Your taxpayer funded police resources are now protecting international dignitaries in your own country and they take precedent over the citizens of this country. I hope you read this article and I hope you get it through your head that you are a serf and they are your masters and that unless we stand up and recognize the evil that they are, they will always destroy us and they will always attempt to destroy us at least and they will, they will rule us with an iron fist through tyranny and technocratic control. Um, I'm off to court. Thank you for watching Flashpoint Radio. I will get you up to date on the goings on at the Maplewood Courthouse. Uh, Jay Z signing off saying, God bless and keep your eyes to the sky.